I don't think that I was wrong in having the dream that I had with the information that I had available. Um, the weight of this all is just um, it's crushing me. I moved here in January with a huge, almost impossible dream to start a farm from scratch and to build a craft school. Literally everything that I have right now is wrapped up in the success or the failure of the project that you see behind me. I've been saving every penny, living incredibly frugally, sacrificing so much, um, including my health at times, to make this dream a reality. Working nights, weekends, insanely long hours to get my small business off the ground and to make the making of this project a reality. Eight years. It took eight years to make this happen. In October of last year, it seemed like my dream was finally about to happen. So we bought a house and we're driving up the driveway. The incredible high of convincing my husband, Adam, to pack up everything that we had in Seattle and move our entire lives across the country to follow my dreams to Tennessee was peppered with a few lows. Like selling the piece of property that I had worked my fingers to the bone for five years, turning into a self-sufficient homestead. And so to think about leaving this place uh, after I've put every piece of me into building my dream is not an easy thing. Saying goodbye to our friends and family that lived in Seattle and going off into the unknown and starting fresh not knowing what was gonna happen. There were some more highs like driving across the border into the state of Tennessee Woo! and knowing our new life was about to begin. And then we were greeted here by 26 complete strangers who showed up to help us unload our moving truck and became instant friends. Look at this empty truck and all the amazing people that came to help. Woo! 2020 was off to an insanely good start. Things at the farm were rolling right along. I was able to hire one of my best friends to work with me. And that was so exciting because being able to work with friends was one of the biggest reasons I wanted to move here in the first place. I started working with a company called Barn Pros to design the perfect space for the craft school that I wanted to develop here. My new business partner, Josh, and I met with an online business expert who is gonna help us to develop online courses to go hand in hand with the in-person classes we'd offer here at the craft school. Even though it was a ton of work and involved way too much time sitting in front of a computer, Josh and I were so excited to put in those long hours and, and do that hard work to build up the back end of the online business because it meant so many good things not just for our business but also for our long-term goals because someday we also want to grow this craft school into a craft school for kids that can help them to learn how to use their hands and to build self-confidence and skill sets at an early age that's something that both josh and i really wish we'd had access to when we were kids as well we barely had time to build up a good rhythm with that back end work though before it was time to actually break ground for for this shop and I was so excited about that moment. Inside that first bucket of dirt was eight years of hopes and dreams. I had run a woodworking school in Seattle for three years. I'd traveled the country teaching and speaking, and I absolutely loved going around and learning new things and, and building my community. But I've also always wanted to live on a farm and farm life isn't super conducive to traveling all the time. So I knew that if I wanted to continue doing the thing that I loved in teaching and learning and also wanted to be a farmer, I needed to figure out a way to make everything come to me on my farm. And that's when this idea happened. Things were going really, really well at that point because my friend Daniel Amick, who's helping me build this building, is a whiz with a skid steer and he can just do dirt work faster than you could possibly imagine. But then we had some weather delays. Well, this is less than ideal. This is crazy. This is literally what it's been like the entire time we've been trying to build. And then some much worse weather delays. Deadly tornadoes sweeping through one of those Super Tuesday states, Tennessee. And then... The CDC all but promises that the coronavirus will spread here. Since mid-April, lumber is up 170%. Order to shelter in place. In March, a six-week shutdown of my business seemed an 
insurmountable mountain to climb because I had so much invested in getting the ball rolling so that we could start building. I, I had purchased the building package from Barn Pros. I had hired Josh to work alongside me because I knew that this was going to take so much of my capacity this year that I needed someone to help with the other aspects of the business. I had hired Daniel to, to work alongside me and Daniel and Josh and everyone else involved was, was relying on me and my income to be able to take care of their families. And I just, I didn't have six weeks of, uh, of that in me at that point. The way that I felt in March is honestly pretty funny now that I look back at it because I mean, as you know, it's now been seven more months of that and um, yeah, just the blows and the hits have just kept coming without really relenting and left so many things that, that felt like such sure things um, totally unsure. Some good did come in April though when Daniel told me that he thought we could probably save a lot of money um, both crew and equipment wise if we were to just kind of use our farm brains a little bit to figure out how we could actually get this building process moving forward. And so that's exactly what we did. It was a hot, sweaty summer, but even though it was physically pretty miserable work, it really didn't feel that miserable because at least we were able to move forward. The times that I was able to work with the guys to set posts and to see forward progress felt so good and, and gave just like little glimpses of hope for, you know, things getting better as we could move forward. The minute that the trusses started going up and eight years of, of hard work and, and dreaming, the, the minute that that drawing that I'd had on paper started to take an actual physical shape before my very eyes was absolutely incredible. And it made all of the, the sweat and the tears and the, everything that had happened up to that point feel totally worth it. Because I mean, here it was, it was happening. Um, we were moving forward and, and things, were, things were going well. But with that peak came another valley, and this is the deepest one yet because the money ran out. And I mean, like I said, literally every single thing that I have in, is, is sitting right there. Every, every, every financial resource, every hope and dream of the future is, is literally right there. And, and you know, there's some steps that like need to get done right now, like getting the roof on because every single time that it rains right now and we're just going into winter and it's about to rain a whole lot all the time, you know, means that the boards are that much closer to rotting and the plywood is that much closer to delaminating. And I mean, the money's gone, the time and effort is spent, um, but I have no choice to, but to figure out how the heck I'm gonna get this roof on because I don't have any other choice. The thing that makes all of this so hard for me though is that it's not like I didn't th think this through. Like every single person talks about, you know, their building project taking longer than, it, than it, they expected it to and it costing more than they thought it would. And I mean, yeah, like we were supposed to have the doors to the school open in May of 2020. And right now I have no idea how I'm gonna get the roof on the dang thing, much less anything else. Even if so much of my income hadn't disappeared, the unexpected costs and the, the, the curveballs that 2020 has just continued to lob our way have really made this project seem impossible. And right now I'm at a turning point, like adapt and overcome or abandon all this. I mean, really, I try not to think about money very much. I grew up without any, and so I've kind of always lived under the assumption that when you have it, you use it, and when you don't, you don't. But like now with so many other people's dreams and livelihoods wrapped up in my dream, the weight of this all is just um, it's crushing me. I don't think that I was wrong in having the dream that I had with the information that I had available. Um, and I know that there, I know that like this, just like every other problem I face is totally figure outable and I, and I have every confidence that we will. It's just, man, things are not easy right now. Like I can't go back. I can't change the way 2020 has gone, but I can do whatever it takes to move forward.
When people ask me how to get started, whether it's woodworking or farming or anything else, I always tell them the same thing that my grandpa, who lived through the Great Depression, told me. You just have to use whatever you've got right now to get started and to, to start doing those things. Take the first step, whatever that step looks like, at least you're moving forward. And so right now, I think that's the only thing that I can do. Oh yeah, there's also another valley that I completely forgot to tell you about. And that is the online business expert who was going to help us develop the online courses and all of the, the things that were gonna augment the physical things that we were doing here, completely left us hanging. And after all of the hours and hours of hard work that Josh and I had put in building up that back end, that was just like, I mean, that was 2020 for you, huh? <laughs> but Josh and I got to talking and we're like, well, maybe we could just build our own online platform. Like, yeah, it's not gonna be perfect and it's not gonna be, you know, have all the bells and whistles that the other one might have, but at least it would be a first step. And the thing is that, that the pandemic has left everyone else also working from home and, and online learning is now so much more a possible thing. And because of so many of the challenges that the pandemic has brought into so many people's lives, that actually gave Josh and I a lot of motivation and excitement to move forward with teaching the classes that we wanted to teach. Because right now, it's more important than ever before to learn basic life skills that, that, that have been lost along the way, like how to plant a garden, how to you know, start a small business, how to rely on your community when, when things are uncertain. These are all classes that I, am, that I was planning to teach in there. So why not figure out a way that we could just teach it online right now? The thing that made actually hosting our own online learning platform and doing classes actually suddenly seem possible was some changes that Squarespace recently made to their platform. Squarespace has been supporting my business since 2014 when I started my business and I just had a couple followers reading the blogs that I was posting. Squarespace is a perfect platform for someone who's not super tech savvy like me to have a way that I could drag and drop whatever information I wanted to put out there into the world into a beautiful artist design template that would present it to the world beautifully. A new scheduling service through Squarespace made it possible for us to set up our classes and actually maintain a good class schedule. And then an email client that Squarespace also just integrated made it possible for us to contact the people that were wanting to take classes for me to send emails out to my blog audience to let them know that we were offering classes. And all of a sudden, all of this just seemed possible. So we did it and we hosted our first class and 95 people showed up to learn about growing their own small business. And, and that helped us to get one more day of work done on this building but now we're out again <laughs> we've got to hustle again and, I, and that's just going to be how it is moving forward and i think that that's okay it's my hope that the classes that we're offering really help people to take that next step and move forward with their own things and it's also going to be the way that we kind of just make this thing take the next step forward and do the next thing that needs to get done. If you would like to support what we're doing here and learn a new skill, or if you'd like to give someone the gift of learning for the holidays, then go over and check out my Squarespace website, anavaltrades.com. And if you'd like to start a website of your own, go to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash and you'll get a 10% discount. So 2020 is gonna be the year of the pivot. We don't have any choice but to lean on our community and to figure things out. And that's what we're gonna do. If you like this video, I bet you will love the video that has us setting these posts with a 1 8 inch tolerance using just a piece of string to measure. I will see you in that video. Cheers.